Welcome back to DFL. Our guests tonight are Mike and Rose Obertino. We're having a really good and informative time talking about um, why it is or why it seems that it's more acceptable when a man cheats on a woman, of course. Um, we're going to maybe recap some, but we also want to not let Mike be hanging on. And Rose, you made some really yes. great points. Yes, just before we went into the break, um, mm -hmm. Delia, I was... Um, listening to Mike and I, I I know where Mike is coming from because mm -hmm. Mike has discussed this so much with me mm -hmm. and I am very comfortable with it but um, I do not want us to f leave our viewers hanging mm -hmm. um, thinking that looks because of slavery the men are cheating and it's okay for them to cheat mm -hmm. you know I think Mike will explain because he has explained before the whole question of look what is going on with us? Um, are we still enslaved then? If um, history has put us in this mess, so to speak, quote unquote, and, are we are, and it, it, it looks nice, we are hanging to mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's a great thing. So men have excuses to say, oh, ho, so is history? That, right. that, that has caused this thing. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, let's, so let's I think Mike will be Mike able to help. Said, but yes. I also want the viewers to know that we, we're getting a lot of comments here. We have one um, viewer. I will read your email afterwards. But I do think that Mike most probably will answer the, the question as we, yes. as we go along. Yes. Mike, yeah. don't leave us hanging. <laughs> mm. Yes. Well, the thing is, we um, tend to underestimate the power of slavery you know, that mm -hmm. dehumanizing experience. And there are so many different things. I mentioned just a couple of them. I mentioned the debasing of the woman in terms of language. And we know our, our swear words and so on. They really, we, they're used up to now and they still debase women. And also the debasing in terms of um, physical sexual abuse and so on. There's another factor and um, that one must look at, and it's the fact that the master determined who was going to breed. He wanted the best stock, and so he chose who the stud would be to sire the women. That was what was done, just like a prize bull would be used to sire a cow, or the cow, so to speak. Now, what would be the reaction of the men who were not chosen to sire the females. One would say, oh, such men would probably feel very good that they were not chosen. But in actuality, they would probably envy the stud and come emancipation time when there's a free for all, those men who were not, who, whose sexuality was circumscribed would feel that sense of relief and then they would start to compete with the stud and it would be a scenario like, oh, so you had the master's approval, you know, you were having seven women controlling, siring, and I was without. Now we are on a level playing field. We're going to compete, and I'll show you I could get eight women to your seven. And this is the thinking that still pervades our psyches in a sense. So that is the negative effect of slavery. I'm not saying it is responsible totally, but it is a factor. Okay. Link that with the patriarchal order, the whole thinking of the macho man, the father slapping the son and saying, oh, that's a chip off the old block when mm -hmm. he goes philandering. Mm -hmm. Not so for the women, because my daughter has to be protected. So it's two different standards mm -hmm. for children. Uh, yeah. You know, the young boys are encouraged to go philandering. So mm -hmm. when you grow up to be a man, that still persists and take that and link it with what will happen in slavery we have a powder keg all right I, I can understand what you've just said but it still doesn't for, for me I think that now we are as a human race mm -hmm. we are more intelligent we are not in, we're not in slavery anymore mm -hmm. so we should now know better yeah but you see a program was written you know we were actually programmed so, so much so that we had it as our good to have as many women as possible because, you know, mm -hmm. that is what the, the, the master was, was, was promoting, you know? Okay. So, I so we need to deprogram Now we need to yes. deprogram. Okay. And it's only education. Yes. Right. That yes. can help us write a new program. Mm -hmm. 
so that we have to say in our generation, the yes. buck stops but here. Yes. I understand what makes me a cheater. Yeah, but is okay. So you're saying that the it's the men really who have to yes. check themselves. Mm -hmm. But yes. why? <laughs> I don't see how the men are going to do that because there are there's so many women out there who are accepting that kind of behavior. Yes. They're accepting it. And instead of them putting their foot down and saying, I don't want you anymore, you, we see all these ads on the television and the radio and everywhere talking about HIV, venereal diseases, um, people g g getting clinically depressed, everything yeah. because of that. But the women do not put their foot down. Because you see, um, Delia, that um, we women, how much do we love ourselves? And if you love. Not a lot, so it I, seems. Ah. If you love yourself, you will know that you are not responsible for men cheating. A lot of women, I've heard them say, you see, it's either cause that um, I'm he going and, 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 you know, have so many other women. This is because there's something I'm not doing right. There's something I'm doing wrong. It's as if women are placed to please men in their sexuality, you know, um, as if we, 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 we kind of support their sexuality. So if they go out now cheating with another woman, it is because we did something wrong. And I always say to women that if you love yourself enough, you will know that I, I am proud of who I am, I am confident of who I am, and I'm not responsible for any man who goes cheating. In our, res in our relationship, Mike and I, I remember when we first got married, we got married in England and we came home and my, there was a little detachment to the boys. Um, so, because, well, I, I, Mike can speak for himself, but I, I, I was part of it and I, was, and I saw what happened to Mike. And a lot of his friends were telling him things like, oh, you know, look at you. Um, um, you, you just ban all of us, you know. Rose is ruling you, man. Rose is in charge and that kind of a thing, you know. And, um, and in Mike's spirit, Mike was being challenged. And if Mike wasn't strong, I'm happy he did all this history mm -hmm. research <laughs> to know, I suppose, I, or maybe he did it after whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that he was man enough to say, look, I know what I want, mm -hmm. and you all are not going to program me into doing what you all want to do, because mm -hmm. I know what I am. And to be a real man is to be able to be in control of oneself. And I think this is what we are lacking. And society is just there, you know, applauding yes. the negative. OK, what about this, this trail of thought then? Because we always say that behavior, um, the way to stop it, or the way to try and make it um, uh, a better type of behavior is right from the beginning. If we look at right from the beginning, we look at our parents. Mm -hmm. What about the role and the responsibility that a mother has mm -hmm. to ensure that her son mm -hmm. has, you know, is brought up with the right principles? So, so, so you say, son, well, you just have one woman. Mm -hmm. Son, mm -hmm. you don't run around. Mm -hmm. Son, mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps mm -hmm. if mothers were doing that, yes. not that we can control it because you know, mm -hmm. children get older. But I think that that's an important way of at least trying to make a man feel more, you know, not say more important, but make a man feel that he doesn't need to be running around. But you know, there are a lot of men who say mm -hmm. that it's just the way it is with a man. You have to accept. A, a man mm -hmm. will never be able to just have one woman. He will always be running around. Yeah, That's just in him. This but is what society has done to them, poor fellas. Yes, I, I, I think, I mean, in the natural order of things, there is a leaning towards that thinking. You know, because if you look at the, the amount of sperm a man produces vis-a-vis -vis the number of eggs a woman produces, you see a, a dichotomy in terms of mm -hmm. just sheer numbers. Mm -hmm. So one would think that, all right, for the sake of procreation, for there to be human beings, mm -hmm. a man has to be that way. You know, he has to fertilize as many women as possible. You know, that kind of thinking could be a result when you look at, you know, just pure biology. But we are human beings, you know? And we can learn to behave differently. Even mm -hmm. in our past, we had such negative teachings. You know, we just learned all those automatic negative things. If we understand what really went on, we, then we can say the buck stops here. And I have to teach my children different. No. I have to make them you know, different. Difficult thing it shouldn't be. Well, we're going to go to a break now. When we come back, we will take your calls and we'll also 
um, read out so many emails that we received before the program. I know that you're waiting for them, all right? So, a um, uh, reminder of tonight's giveaways uh, for Dolor Factor fans, name the country of my birth and the country I call home. And you win a bag of goodies. Now, name the lady or the company that provided DFL's first birthday cake. And if you win, you and your friend will have some birthday cake with us. This is the Law Factor Live. We'll be right back whilst we're discussing why is it more acceptable for men to be unfaithful. <laughs> 